Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video I'm going to be doing the part two of my makeup collection. So in this video I'm going to be showing you all of my complexion and face products and what I like and what I do not like about each one of them. So let's just dive on into all right, it. Alright, so I keep some of my complexion products in this second drawer um, on my left side. So let's start with the color correcting. Now as you can see this one in the middle is not open but this is one of my favorite. I keep them in my makeup kit to use on people as well when I am doing um, makeup on clients. And then this I love as well. Okay so both of them I love but I can't find pink in this anymore so I think I'm gonna have to go with the Naked Urban Decay. These are just like five six bucks and these are like 26 bucks that's the only difference i i do not prefer one over the other honestly and then so these are all my concealers let's just dive on in so this is my light sand is my summer color <laughs> i know right okay so it's still very fair but that is my summer shade and then obviously my fair is my every year shade now, to be honest with you, I love the NYX HD Studio Concealer for the color correcting. I'm not a huge fan um, of the actual concealer. I don't know why, but I'm not the biggest fan of it. It's not enough coverage for me. And to be honest, I really do like the Kylie Concealer, although this one is a little too yellow on me, like I said in my review of it, which is surprising because I am very yellow-toned. Um... This is just a little too much of a yellow undertone to it, but I still really do like it, and I love it to prime my eyelids. And then this, Estee Lauder, I don't even think they make this anymore, Smoothing Cream Concealer. It's good. I use it now more so to cut creases. And then this is so funny because this concealer used to be, like, the shit. Like, every single YouTuber makeup artist, it seems like this was the concealer that they used. Um... I reach for this when I'm doing, I don't want full, full coverage, but I don't want sheer coverage. This is definitely a medium co coverage, I think, um, because once you go to shape tape, you can never go back type of situation for full coverage. I do still like this, but I'm not as eager to rebuy this as I am to buy my shape tape. And then the Fenty Matchstick um, Concealer. So I have the shade linen and this shade I got with that trio and I have this in my review when um I when the Fenty skin line launched and this I'm not wild about I think the main reason is this is my skin tone so it's not a crazy concealer for me like it doesn't really cover much but again this is something I will throw on under my eyes if I'm just running out or just putting on mascara and I'm not doing a full face because this is not this is not something that will cover you up like crazy and it's also not the easiest to apply especially in like the inner corner areas so this is not like a big win for me so Kat Von D white concealer this is honestly almost empty I need to buy another one, and this I will truly buy another one of. Honestly, this product I love. If I'm at my palest, I will throw a couple dots under my eyes, like over top of my shape tape, to like really light and brighten that up. Um, but I also use this for when I'm doing costume makeup. I know that's not the best. I need to get like an actual costume makeup kit because this is not it's too expensive to just try and apply everywhere although I did try and do it for when I did Pennywise um that's why it is mostly gone but I really do like this I think it's a very unique product and then the next one is the NARS creamy concealer this I personally thought I was going to love I like it but again this is a very sheer coverage I personally think um maybe build it up to a medium coverage but you're not getting full coverage out of this this is like I'm trying to look like I'm not wearing makeup type of makeup day you know what I mean um but that's really all I have to say about it it's an expensive product it really really is I think it's more expensive than shape tape I think this is closer to $30 um 
and for the coverage I just I don't know I probably will buy another one I'm not gonna sit here and lie but it's not my go-to concealer and then the next concealer which is the Maybelline Age Rewind this this I bought because it was always one of those things that I was just like oh yeah I'm just gonna grab one of these and I never realized how much I actually truly love it I really only use this when I'm throwing concealer under my eyes and not much but I do want to try this with a full face because I have really good hope in this I would like to buy a shade lighter than this because when I use it I honestly use it to conceal I do not use it to highlight as well so I need to get a different shade in this but I I'm obsessed with this. This is the concealer that I keep in my purse. So this Tarte Maracuja Oil Concealer, um, one of the girls at Ulta talked me into buying this, and I'm not crazy about it because it's such a thick consistency, and it's kind of hard to spread, but it's good for spot treating dark patch, not dark patches, dry patches, because it has the Maracuja Oil in it, but this is not something I would ever rebuy again because it's so expensive. And I've used it probably two or three times. And then last but not least, my Lancome Long Lasting Concealer. This was my ride or die for the longest time, as you can see. Um, this is what I used every single day for probably about a year. And I don't think they make it anymore, but it was so good to me. And I don't ever reach for it anymore because I have literally all those. But um, they do make great concealers. Alright, and let's go to cream contour. So I don't have a ton because I found some that I'm obsessed with. Okay, so let's start with these. Now, I feel like I love NYX concealers in everything besides under eye concealing. Unless I can find a shade that fits me better. But this is the contour slash bronzing shade that I use. And what shade is this? CW07. Um, this works really well but I would suggest to blend it out not with a beauty blender but to blend it out with um like something that I use what is it my Clarisonic with the blending head that gives me the best results for cream contouring same with all these other products it's the only method I use for blending them out so that is my one contour shade that I use and then the Hula Quickie Stick this is probably one of the best things that Benefit has ever come out with besides Hula Light. Um, this I suggested to them. I actually emailed them because I'm that bitch. And I said make a Hula Light version of it because this looks so dark. But because this is a cream to powder consistency, when you get it to that powder, it blends out so much where it is almost the shade of a Hula Light. So this is something you definitely have to build up if you are um, of a deeper complexion and you use the hula so it's not it doesn't give you the same results as the original bronzer but I'm still like in love with this and I use this when I really want to look like warm and um, kind of sun-kissed that kind of look I use this a lot in the summer so then in the winter this is my go to like I use this at the end of summer but I only started using it more in the fall time so this was one of my favorites for last year and it is still my favorite. I used it today. I use it almost every single day and look, look at this. I, this is it at its lowest point. Like it, I have not used any of it. Look at that. This is going to last me so freaking long. So like we all gave her shit because it's not a lot of product, but honey, this lasts because I've been using it almost every single day since the launch. Um, and I am obsessed with it. And I use the shade Amber. So in this drawer, I have my Too Faced Born This Way. I really, as you can see how low this is, this is honestly one of my favorite, um, foundations. I need to buy a new one. I don't really use this that much on its own. I normally mix it with another product, but this is still something that's never done me wrong, and it's really good on my dry skin. It never really patches up, um, so this is a really good foundation. Next one is the Maybelline 24-Hour Wear. Now, this 
definitely oxidizes. You have to be careful about how you apply it. It's very inexpensive. Um, you can find it almost at any single drugstore. I buy mine from Ulta because they usually have Maybelline sales. But this is the best dupe for um, what I've heard, the Huda Beauty foundation. I have yet to try that. But this is like $14. And it's great. You just have to be careful. Buy shades lighter because I'm 102 Fair Porcelain. And just be careful about the oxidation. Build it up slow um, so that you don't all of a sudden turn orange. <laughs> This MAC foundation, I honestly can throw this out. The only reason I kept it is so that I know what shade I am when I go to buy another one. Um, I'm NW13, which I think I could probably go down a shade in this. But this was my... I got this for like my 15th birthday and I used it every single day. So this was a good foundation to me. I honestly can't speak on it too much now because I don't remember how good it was. And I probably thought it was way better on me than... It really is now. So I'll have to rebuy it and let you guys know what I think. My next foundation is the Estee Lauder Double Wear. I am obsessed with this foundation. Um, definitely works better when your skin is at a average level. You know what I mean? Like not too oily, not too dry. But I try and make the best of it. I'll sometimes mix in a more hydrating primer. But it's never like done me too wrong. You know what I mean? When I have dry skin, it definitely still looks good. But what I'm trying to say is it looks the best when your skin's not too dry or too oily. Now these two right here are two of my absolute favorite foundations. These, I have bought this shade here specifically probably four times already. This is one of my favorite foundations. This is always the foundation I'm using when someone asks me what I'm wearing because it looks so good. It gives you... A very dewy but full coverage. Um, I love it so much. And it's super inexpensive. You can buy it at any drugstore. Um, I get mine at Ulta because points, you know. <laughs> um, but this one right here, N3, is my summer shade. And then W12 is my all year round shade. And I sometimes even mix when this is too dark for me. Um... But it always gives me a great coverage. And this is amazing on dry skin. Probably the best foundation I've ever used on dry skin. Now the next two that I'm going to talk about is the Elizabeth Arden. And then I'm going to lead into my Chanel. So this Elizabeth Arden Flawless Finish is beautiful. It is, um, I'm one alabaster, which is still a little light on me. But it, the right undertone, so it works. And then sometimes I'll just extra bronze my face up. But this is a beautiful, beautiful foundation. Um, I know like a lot of younger people don't wear Elizabeth Arden. And it is a little more expensive. It's definitely high end. But it's so worth it. Like just great, great coverage. And then if I'm too dry to wear this foundation, I'll mix some of that in. And my skin looks unbelievable so the Le Tint Ultra Tine I know I fucked that up it's fine by Chanel I'm 10 beige this is just high class in a bottle there's the applicator for it um this foundation I spent almost $70 on and I rarely wear it it has such a strong scent which I'm not complaining about just letting you know um this unless you want to go out and splurge on Chanel is not anything I would recommend to go by. It has a tacky feel to it, which sometimes is good. When my skin's at a good point, I love it. When my skin is dry, that's when this bad boy comes in because it is a disaster. But I love it and I don't regret the purchase and I love having it in my collection. So then the next foundation is the Fenty Beauty Foundation. This you can see I have a ton left. Um, I am not crazy about this as much as I thought I would be when I first bought this I loved it way more again probably everyone and their mom knows that this oxidizes so by lighter I'm shade 110 and I got initially shade 120 and I ordered online 130 but returned that I didn't even try that one but this it just doesn't do me as well as I thought it would really adheres to my dry patches um it's very matte and I'm not a huge fan of a matte foundation I don't know, man. It's just one of those things. I would love to have bought these for my kit and 
solely worked off of this because there's such a large shade range but I know if I can't use it on myself and honestly love it I can't use it on everyone else the next foundation is another one I should toss um that is the uh, Sephora what even is this non-grease non-oil um t oh 10 hour wear perfect foundation um I really did like this when I had it but I don't I can't really tell you what the finish is on it anymore because I've had it for so long and it's one of those I need to pitch I just I just haven't you know so I'm not really gonna speak on that too much and then this is my other ride or die it's the Lumi and this for sure so the Make It Forever Ultra HD stick, that gives you a full coverage. It makes you look so luminous. There is a matte foundation. I have not tried it because this has never done me wrong. Um, it is a little too dark for me. Um, and it is 117, so it's a very light shade. I have the matching powder for this as well, which I will talk about later in the video. But this and the ABH stick in the shade Porcelain um, are a great combination. And this gives me like my lighter shade and this gives me my yellow undertone. And I mix them together and I have the perfect foundation. And then the foundation that I'm wearing today is the NARS All Day Luminous Weightless Foundation. I am shade 2 in Mont Blanc. And this is amazing. Don't use it with a sponge because you'll find yourself taking away coverage and product um, with a brush. I use my Sigma foundation brush for this. I don't remember which number it is. But it gives me the best coverage and it's so buildable and you can make it full coverage so easily if you use a brush. The next foundation that I love is the Marc Jacobs Remarkable Foundation. I am shade 10 Ivory Light. This is beautiful. The applicator is a little weird. It's a dotter. Like, it's, like I can't show it to you, but you unscrew this and it has a little ball in there. And you like dot on the foundation. Um, truly though, I love this. It is a great full coverage foundation. And be kind of careful with this if you are very, very dry because this will adhere to some of your drier patches. But overall, my favorite. And then this, I will be rebuying. It is the Lorac Pore Affection Foundation. This, I mix with the Too Faced. And it just gives me a better coverage than on its own. But on its own, it still gives me a really, really great coverage. Um, it is definitely medium to full. And then again, you mix it in with that Too Faced one. And it's just like the perfect luminous foundation. And then the last one that I really actually do want to talk about on my channel is the Even Stevens Whipped Foundation by The Balm. So this I did not think I would like because I'm just going to take the cap off for you guys and show you. It is literally whipped and such full coverage. You only need a little bit. I'm definitely going to do a video using this because you guys will be shocked. This is such full foundation. Um, It's $22 and I think it's $22. And you get a little bit of it, but a little goes a long way. So I will talk about that more in a video, but I love this foundation. Surprisingly, because I didn't think I was going to. Okay, then next I have, you guys already know how I feel about this, Laura Geller Spackle um, Hydrating Primer. I'm obsessed with this. This is literally the best dupe for this primer right here. This is also another one of my favorite primers. If I'm going away somewhere, this is the primer I take because it's small and I know it's gonna work. It's not gonna do me wrong in times that I need it to do me well. And um, it's, it's a lot more compact than this one, obviously, but this Laura Geller is the best dupe for this Make It Forever primer. Next, I have my MAC Strobe Cream, which some days when I'm feeling wild, I use it on its own. Rarely ever, though, I always kind of mix this in when I want a little bit more glow or I'm doing some crazy looks. I'll use it, but um, this is definitely a an interesting primer, you know what I mean? Like, if you've used it, you'll understand. You could probably pull off using this as a highlighter, but I always just mix in with my primers to give me more glow. 
the next primer I have, this is one of my first primers I ever bought. Um for myself I should say so NARS oil free pro prime this is a pore for pore perfecting primer so this gives you kind of the same results as the benefit um, perfection and I like it but I'll have to be a little oily if I'm oily around my nose in the summertime when I'm gonna start sweating a lot I'll use this around my nose but this is not a full face primer that I use anymore um, just like what I use for the Perfection, it's only a spot primer, if that makes sense. Um, I have not used this yet. It's a little sample that I got. This, on the other hand, I have used a ton. Green Tea Primer. This is a vegan primer. I got it in one of those monthly boxes. I love it. It's a very hydrating consistency. Um, I don't know what the brand, oh, Evo Beauty Group. So you can check that out if you are really into the vegan cosmetics. Um, it is a really great primer, very hydrating, very nourishing, and it feels like a lotion going on. This is not a primer, but, but I have it thrown in here. So if I'm feeling like I need hydration, I just throw this on underneath a primer, like extra hydration, because this is a great moisturizer. Next, we have the Milk Blur Stick. So again, I will use this just like the NARS, and I'll spot use this around my nose if it's looking extra pore-like um, on my cheeks, anywhere that I feel like I need help with my pores. This is not my favorite because it kind of like pulls makeup off, and you have to be very, um, you have to like press your foundation into where you're using this. Don't rub because you will rub it off. Um, I can do a review of this and kind of show you guys how I use it when I use it um, if you would like to see that because this is not something I've ever used on my channel. Again, another sample, but this is the same hydrator that we just talked about how much I love. And then my Too Faced Hangover, this is like my second or third one I've gone through. I just bought one of these for my makeup kit and I am obsessed with this. It gives you the tacky feeling so you know that you're foundation is going to stick on but it also gives you hydration the coconut water um all of that mixed together makes this one of my favorite primers and I don't think I'll ever stop rebuying this so if you're looking for a very inexpensive primer that will last you a while the honey do me up by NYX this is my second one and as you can see it's almost gone I think this is like $14 but you just kind of brush it onto your face and I also as well have this in my makeup kit that I use on people and it gives you like that hydrating glowy base without having to mix a couple products together and I really really like this. So surprise this Stila Aqua Glow was the I there's nothing there's literally that is the end there's nothing left the only reason I kept it was so again I didn't forget what it was when I go to rebuy it. My mom bought this for herself and then gave it to me. And this is an amazing primer. Like, it gives you a cooling effect, so it's great to use in the summer. I use this, like, I brought this along on vacation after we'd be at the pool and I was showering and doing my makeup before we went to dinner. This is, like, the most satisfying <laughs> primer to use because it's just so cooling and hydrating and it just gives you a really great base. But I didn't think I would ever be, like, obsessed with this Stila complexion product, and I'm in love with this. Again, this is a Radiant Activator by Estee Edit. This is kind of like, as you can kind of see on the applicator, it has like a kind of golden tint to it. Um, and I use this as like a primer, um, moisturizer type situation. So it will kind of do what strobe cream does, uh, but in a more of a glowy beachy look kind of primer than what the strobe cream does the strobe cream is more intense and this is just that subtle i just got a slight tan i'm at the beach type look if that makes sense so this is another summer favorite of mine okay this one i can honestly say i have never used um i can try it out and let you guys know but it was one of those ones i got in a um makeup box and I have yet to try it. This was a favorite of mine but I'm not insane crazy about it anymore. I bought two of them. Um, I've gone through another one I should say but it's another illuminator 
and strobe cream, strobe cream kind of like outdid this one for me but this is kind of like a less expensive version and this is in shade pink light so it kind of gives you a rosy appearance and then again I just have more samples of different primers that I I've used the perfection but these other little primers I have not tried out yet oh that is a foundation I lied and then this is the sunscreen that I use every single day if I am doing my makeup. I love this. Um, Non-greasy, and that is true. I have it on right now. And it's just really great. It's not too crazy tinted. Like, I can get away with wearing it. So if you're darker than me, you will definitely be able to get away with wearing this. And then this primer is um, an Ole Hendrickson. This is an, not really a primer. This is a... Um, skincare product that I use as a primer. So it's a counterbalance oil control hydrator. This keeps you well balanced between being too oily and being too dry. I love this. This is great in the summer. Again, when I'm feeling like I'm getting sweaty and my makeup's running off, but I'm not oily. So this is a really, really great product. It's a little more expensive, but you can also use it as a skincare product. Then this Fenty Beauty Primer is one of my favorites. I was just raving about this in a couple videos ago. And I I don't know what it is. It gives me such a lotiony feel. I love the primer more than I love the foundation because this is like a good product for everyone because this will hydrate my skin and I can use any foundation with it and it looks great. Plus, I love the scent of it. Another one that I have not tried a ton, but I've used it like once or twice since I bought it, and that's the Professional, but the Pearl Primer one, and I really do like this. I can use this in a video as well if you guys would like to see this in action. Um, I really do like this because I like that they came out with like an hydrating one. The Becca Backlight Primer, Jaclyn Hill obviously got me on this one. This is another one of my favorites for the summer. It does the same as like the Estee Edit does, and but this is like an actual primer. So this gives you that glow, hydration, just reminds me of summer. So this is a really good one that I use in the summer. Um, and then if I want to be a little glowy during like the non-summer times of the year, I'll use this as well. But this is not one I reach to in the winter. And then back here, I just have a couple extra sunscreens. This is a primer I haven't tried yet either. And then this Tarte sunscreen. I don't know if they sell it anymore, but I am in love with this. And I use this every single day when I'm not wearing makeup. And I'm not using my other sunscreen. And then for the powders, so I have my... Um, translucent RCMA powder. I just bought one of these from AC Moore, these like plain little things, and I put them in this. RCMA, you know, if you watch my channel, is the only, one of the only um, setting powders that I use. This is one of my favorites, ride or die. Um, I keep it in my kit. I use it on everyone. It is great for every skin type, especially dry skin. There is no flashbacks, and it is $12 for one tube, tub thing, whatever you want to call it. Then I have my Patrick Star Mac Collab. This is another one of my favorite setting powders. This works so well on me, um, and that's hard for dry skin. And um, I'm kind of stingy with this because it has like that neutral skin finish to it. So I don't have to put a powder on top, which is what I always do with the RCMA to kind of bring my skin color back. But I don't want to. OD use this and it run out because I love it so much. So Laura Mercier everyone probably is in love with. This is probably one of my least favorite complexion products that I own. It is too cakey for me. Um, I don't, it's good for oily skin so that's why I keep it. I should probably put it in my kit because I do not use this ever and I had actually, this is the second or third one that I bought because when I was first getting to makeup I was like oh this is how I'm supposed to look. Until I realized like honey no you look bad so I stopped wearing this and I switched to the RCMA and the RCMA is like three times less than this is and then another one of my absolute favorite powders for setting my face with dry skin is the perfect setting powder by cover fx this the amount of product you get for the price is insane but this gives you the best finish I'm not even joking. If you want to splurge and get a good setting powder, I would pick this over Laura Mercier any day. And last but not least for this drawer, I use the MAC Fix Plus. Obviously, this is like my fifth bottle of this that I've gone through. And this is my favorite product to use to kind of like 
blend everything together at the end. You spray it on, everything just melts together and looks perfect. This is probably one of the best lower price pointed finishing sprays that I've ever used. Um, it kind of has an alcohol type scent to it, which will probably make sense because alcohol is the second ingredient in it. But um, for a really like low price point, I think this does a really good job and it doesn't spray weird or anything because sometimes inexpensive setting sprays spray hella weird um, and will mess up your makeup, but this does really well. Another product that I have never had do me wrong is the 3-in-1 Too Faced Hangover Setting Spray. Now this, I am obsessed with the scent because it smells like coconut water. Um, it makes my skin look amazing and this is one that I know I will repurchase just like hangover primer I will probably never stop repurchasing this and this is definitely something I'm going to add to my kit in the future now the next one is the urban decay all-nighter setting spray this again I've gone through like two or three of them this also has a very high alcohol content so if you're looking for something to hydrate you in a mist this is not the way to go if you are oily this is perfect for you um they actually have like redone this line and i think that they have one that's more hydrating than this but this is one of those sprays that will hold your makeup on but if you have dry skin cannot guarantee you that you're not going to look dry in a couple hours and then this is my second one that I've gone through of this. It's the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea. It I have in um, a small bottle in my travel bag that I keep in my purse, and I love it. You can I spray it on all the time in the summer when we're walking around at the beach and I'm getting like sweaty and I feel like my makeup's running. This helps reset it, um, but it also just gives you that really refreshed, hydrated look. So this is a great one as well, which I think this is less expensive than the Too Faced one. And I honestly like both of them. It's the longest video of 2018. I apologize so bad to you guys. But I really hope that you enjoyed it and that helped you a lot. I know a lot of people said they liked me talking through and telling what products I like and what I don't like. Um, so if you did enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up down below. Don't forget to subscribe as well. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye, everyone. I think you're going to have to be. Are you gonna have to go there?